let's talk about the fundamental theorem of Galois theory. So we start with the Galois extension that K over F be a finite Galois extension. And we let uh, the automorphism group let G denote the automorphism group K over F. Okay. So, we have uh, two sorts of objects that uh, uh, are related by this fundamental theorem. And they are on the one hand uh, subfields of K. So, let us call this F for field. Uh, script F is the set of all E, where E is a subfield of K which contains F. So, E is basically a subfield of K containing F and this is sometimes called the set of all intermediate fields of this extension. Okay, so, K and F themselves are included in script F. So, K E is something that sits between uh, K and F. So, that is on the one hand. So, the uh, such objects are in script F and in script G. So, we will put so script G is the other kind of object which is now subgroups. So, this is the set of all H such that H is a subgroup of the group G okay, of all automorphisms. Okay, and one has uh, maps between these two sets. So, from script F to script G. So, given an intermediate field E, one associates the set of all automorphisms of K which are identity on E. Okay, so, observe this is just a set of all sigma which is in, you can say it is all sigma and G. This G is automorphisms of K which are identity on F, but this is something extra is required of sigma. Sigma restricted to E should also be identity on E. Okay? So, sigma should also fix every element of E not just every element of F. So, that is one and the, the map in the other direction from G to script F is the following given any subgroup H you look at its fixed field k h which is just the set of all elements of k such that sigma of a equals a for all sigma in h. Okay, and as we have seen this is a subfield it is a it, this subfield contains f definitely because the sigmas that we are uh, looking at the h that we are looking at is a sub of g right h is contained in g and g is all those automorphisms of K which are definitely identity on F. Okay, so, sigma will definitely fix F in this case. Okay, so, these are maps in both directions and here are some simple properties the obvious properties. Uh, are the following that these maps are inclusion reversing. In other words, if I have two fields E 1 E 2 such that E 1 is contained in E 2 and both contain F and are contained in K, then the fixed field uh, I am sorry the, the automorphisms. So, the group that you associate to E 1 versus the group that you associate to E 2. Okay, since E 1 is smaller than E 2 uh, the, the uh, group associated to E 2 will be contained in the group associated to E 1. Okay? And this just follows from definition because if an element sigma fixes everything in E 2, it necessarily fixes everything in E 1. Okay? So, that is uh, one direction and the other direction is, uh, so maybe we should call this A and B. So, this property 1 A and B is if I have two subgroups H 1 and H 2, okay? they are both subgroups of G. then the fixed fields are also have the opposite inclusion. Okay, again for just reasons of definition H 2 has more elements. So, elements of K which are fixed by every element of H 2 
uh, will certainly fix uh, I mean those elements will certainly be fixed by every element of H1. Okay, so these are both obvious properties. Uh, property 2 here is uh, what happens if you compose these maps. So, if I take F uh, first go to G and then come back to F. Okay, so, what does this mean? I start with the intermediate field E. I look at the subgroup H which is all automorphisms of K which are identity on E. Then I come back I take the fixed field of H okay, and the question is what is the relationship between E and K H in general. So, observe that the following holds that K H certainly contains E. Okay. Again definition basically because elements of H already fix every element of E. Right? So, the fixed field has to contain E. Okay. So, this is one, uh, one statement is again to A b is for the opposite you start with g go to f and you go back in other words you start with a subgroup you form its fixed field then you look at the automorphisms of k which fix this fixed field okay then what's the relationship between that and the original subgroup h so the, the left hand side here is all automorphisms of K which fix every element of K H definitely every element of H fixes every element of K H by definition. Okay. So, again you have this trivially you have this inclusion. Okay. So, these are the, the various facts uh, which are more or less obvious from definition that these two maps F and G are inclusion reversing. Okay. So, if the inclusion here goes one way uh, there it is the other way around E1 sub of E2, but here it is contained. And what happens when you compose the maps? The final answer after composing the two is always bigger than the original. Okay. So, these are the simple properties and the fundamental theorem of Galois theory says really that these two maps are inverses of each other. Okay. So, here is the theorem. which we call the fundamental theorem of Galois theory. Which is that, that k over f be a finite Galois extension with Galois group G. So, this group of automorphisms is called the Galois group. Then the following hold the maps but in some sense that is really the, the, the only main content the maps F um, to G E going to ot K E and G to F these two maps are inverses of each other. Okay. So, therefore, they are both bijections because they are both uh, you know they have inverses therefore and are hence bijections. So, these set up these maps give you a bijective correspondence between the set of intermediate uh, subfields and the set of subgroups. Okay. Okay, Let us prove this most of the work required to prove it we have already done by way of the various intermediate propositions that we have proved so far. So, here is the um, let us prove one direction first um, let us show that f followed by g. So, we said uh, from f to g and back k e then let us go back to k h. So, claim is that 
this fixed field kh is exactly the field e okay so that's one one part of the the theorem because it establishes that when you compose in this order then you get the identity on f okay so let's just draw the extension tower kef Okay, and what is given? You are given that k over f is a Galois extension. So, this is known to be a Galois extension or given to be Galois. Okay, now, the first claim well in order to prove uh, what is it that we needed to prove that k h is E again where h is the, the subgroup. So, the all we need to really prove is that this extension is Galois. Okay, so, this is now going to be our claim. claim if k over f is Galois, then k over e is also Galois, is a Galois extension. Okay, that is actually all we need to prove because let us just complete the proof assuming this claim. So, uh, once this claim is established, what does this tell you? Well, it says that uh, recall what the uh, one of our equivalent characterizations of Galois extensions was it said if k over something is Galois then the fixed field of ought. So, then once established this uh, proves that k h is exactly E by our characterization of Galois extensions. So, this was one of those equivalent conditions that we proved, okay, where h is exactly what k e. So, look back on that theorem which we showed. So, if you show it is Galois, then you are done, okay. Now, to prove this, we will use the other characterization of a Galois extension, which is that it is normal and separable. Okay. So, if k over f is normal and separable, we just need to show that the same is true of k as thought of as an extension over E. Okay. So, let us do that. So, k over f is normal and separable. Or if you look back on the same characterization of Galois extensions that we proved, we, we showed this. If it is normal and separable, then of course, it means that uh, for every element alpha of k, the minimal polynomial so let me call it f alpha now f alpha of x with coefficients in f x um, is well it splits into a, a product of distinct linear factors over k. Okay. In other words, when you think of it uh, E, when I write f alpha of x, um, it expands like this x minus alpha i. 1 to d, let us say alpha i's are all elements of k, alpha i um, not equal to alpha j or i not equal to j and d is just the degree of f. Okay, so, it splits completely and these roots are all distinct. So, that is what separability means and splits completely is the normality of the extension. Okay, now, all we need to show is that the same is true when you think of k as an extension over e. Okay. So, let us do the following. So, now take the same element alpha. So, take alpha that we are looking at in k and uh, let. So, I want to think of k as an extension of E. So, I need to now look at the minimal polynomial. So, let g alpha of x belonging to E of x now be its minimal polynomial over E. Okay, meaning it is the um, unique smallest degree polynomial with coefficients in E that uh, has alpha as a root. Okay. Now, observe that 
So, this is our usual uh, sort of argument. So, observe that f alpha is also in E x, it is actually in f x, but therefore it is certainly in E x because E is bigger and f alpha has alpha as a root which implies that g alpha must divide f alpha. Right? So, this is a general fact if I take the minimal polynomial of an element uh, alpha over some field f then I also look at its minimal polynomial over a, over a larger field. Okay? So, this, all this is happening inside some ambient field then the minimal polynomial over the you know over the over e will divide the minimal polynomial of alpha over f okay? exactly for this reason. So, g alpha divides f alpha, but f alpha already factors into a product of distinct linear factors right this is a, a, as we just said in in k okay? and now g alpha divides f alpha means of course, that what can g alpha look like well it can only have since it divides f alpha it has to be a product of some of these factors. So, g alpha is therefore, a product uh, x minus alpha i where i belongs to some subset let us call it s of 1 to d. Okay. So, it has to run over some smaller subset of, of 1 to d possibly, but whatever it is g alpha of x again splits into distinct linear factors this is uh, this is still a product of distinct linear factors over k. In other words g alpha is also um, it is a it is a separable polynomial which splits over k. Okay. So, that is exactly uh, what we need to show this implies by k over e is again normal and separable since this holds for all alpha in k i.e. it is Galois. Okay. So, um, notice how we sort of used all the various characterizations of Galois here um, to prove that f and g are uh, I mean the maps between f and g are uh, inverses of each other we need you know we use this this um, characterization of, of a Galois extension. But to show that when k over f is Galois then k over e is Galois it is actually more convenient to use the other definition in terms of normality and separability. Okay, good. So, that establishes uh, that one of the two compositions is the identity. So, now uh, what is the other thing that is left uh, we, <coughs> we claim next ok we will show next. that the other compositions also identity you take g then go to f which means I take a subgroup h I form its fixed field then I come back and take the set of automorphisms of k which fix k h. Okay. So, then claim is that automorphisms of k over k h is exactly h. Okay. But recall this is exactly what we, we proved um, as a one of the corollaries of, of Artin's theorem. Okay. So, um, proof recall we have already done this. Okay. In fact, what did what was the thing we said? We said if I have um, so more generally we, we made the following statement we said if gamma is a finite subgroup of the automorphism group finite subgroup then we showed the following that k over k gamma is Galois it is a Galois extension with uh, the Galois group or k over k a k gamma equal to gamma right this is the one of the propositions we showed. So, now just use this proposition just apply it to h that is all. So, take gamma equals h and what it shows exactly is that if I take automorphisms of k over k h then that is exactly the, the group h that we started. Okay. So, this is done. So, that proves the second half of the, the Galois correspondence or the fundamental theorem of Galois theorem. 
so that finishes the proof okay so uh, i just want to make one last remark uh, before before we end this discussion which is that uh, so on the one hand i have these extension fields k e f and on the other hand i have the group g which is hot k f and well i have various subgroups h and it's sort of useful from a symmetry perspective to put an identity there okay so sort of so that it looks the same uh, and now observe uh, something more the galois correspondence so what does the galois correspondence say to each h if i associate the field e which is the fixed field of h k h then that's the bijection right that's the correspondence from groups to to subfields and now again we have a map in the other direction also but this this correspondence has the following very nice uh, uh, property the dimensions have a nice property which is if i look at the degree of this extension from k to k e okay so if h and e correspond to each other then the degree of this extension k e is just the cardinality of h okay so recall so this is also artin's theorem if you wish uh, k k h degree of the extension is exactly the cardinality of h okay and i mean just for symmetry again think of the cardinality of h as just being h by 1 so it's the cardinality of h by the cardinality of the identity okay so what does that say well that's like the the cardinality of h divided by the cardinality of e okay or the the index of the identity in the the subgroup h okay so that's one uh, further uh, if, what about the other guy so if I, i if i look for this and this for instance so observe there is just multiplicativity here of uh, degrees so this is one observation to make about the uh, cardinalities of the the subgroup and the uh, degree of the extension now observe that k f similarly is therefore the cardinality of the group g okay and if you divide this one equation by the other that's just going to give you k f by k e right so this is my e in my figure so k f by k e because degrees of extension so when you have a tower the degree is just multiply so this is just the degree of the extension ef and so that's just the cardinality of g over the cardinality of h okay which we could also write as the index of the subgroup h in the subgroup g okay so you should you should think of you know there's also symmetry in the other direction so this uh, index of h in g or the quotient of their cardinalities is the same as the um the degree of the extension e over f okay so we will talk about uh, sort of the second part of the the galois correspondence which uh, sort of asks or answers the question as to when this uh, this brown extension e over f is galois